Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Brian, and today is Thursday, November 9th, 2023, and this is episode 564 of the Lots Project Podcast, where we're defying norms and designing freedom. Today's episode is titled The Gig Economy, What It Is and How to Jump In, and today I'll be talking about the term uh, that's been around for quite a while. Uh, we'll be talking about what it is, uh, if it's still unfamiliar to some people, and how to take part in it. But let's first grab a cup of coffee, catch up with what's going on in the live chat, and dive, we'll dive into that topic in just a little bit. Good morning, good morning, good morning. MSC Rifle says Groundhog Day. Yeah, do you want me to uh, want me to do it again? I could sit here. I could do it for an hour. I could just do the intro for an hour. That would be an interesting show. Uh, good morning, Hunter, over on Twitch. Thanks for tuning in every day. Uh, Mike Philippi, Nomad, Chris Dixon, how we doing? Holy shit, I beat Brian here. Did you beat me there on the first go-round or the second go-round? Or did you come in when I was frozen? Yeah, yeah, there were many options there. Good morning, uh, Digger and Rewild Their Life and Gingerbread Farms in early at uh, quarter to six. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, quality and quantity today. Yes, Chris. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Quality and quantity. Low quality, high quantity is the name of the game today. So what's going on, everybody? Good morning. Good morning. Hope everything's going well. Warm one here in Tennessee. Never really cooled down overnight. I, um, I think it's like 70 out still and I, it's going to be the high for the day it's supposed to cloud up and then eventually rain for uh, i think in about the next 24 hours something like that and um yeah drop off a little bit but not too bad not too bad still going to be staying warmer than uh if we were still in minnesota i was thinking about that yesterday so i'll touch on that here in a little bit um um Wait, what? James talking about grocery delivery ended your marriage. I'm not sure what that's all about. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, anyway, what's in the cup this morning? Uh, finishing up that bag of light roast Nicaraguan, and it is, uh, it's is—it's really growing on me. It, it's different than what I normally get. I don't necessarily get a, uh, a Nicaraguan maybe every couple months, I think, but be and Brian was sending it out. Uh, it was a little different when I started tasting it, and uh, by the end of the pound, I, I, I'm perfectly uh, perfectly satisfied with it for sure. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of the like the light Colombian, the light Ethiopian things like that. Um, Chris Dixon says, "Ball me 28 F there this morning." Thanks for the conversion. I appreciate that. Greenberry Grove, thanks for swinging in. Hope everything is going all right down there in Florida. And um, all right, well, what do I have on the the coffee chat list for today? Um, man, Corey and I every day we walk the dogs here. Um, we're on a pretty pretty set route um, every day, morning, afternoon, we walk down the road that we're, we're parked on. We're not parked on the road. We're parked. Sorry, everything's going to bounce here in just a second. Norman's getting ready to lay down in, in the slide right next to me. Uh, I'm, antis I'm anticipating it. <laughs> He's just circling. And wow, gentle, gentle today. Anyway, we walk them up and down the walk them up and down the road here and um at one point at the end of the road we multiple times in this field that we walk by i've mentioned it a couple times there's been um fairly decent sized bucks laying in the weeds kind of looking at us and just watching us go by bedded down standing in the weeds laying in the weeds depending on where they were and um Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gingerbread. Okay, I'll get to that in a little bit. But um, anyway, we we were watching it. And then once you see one, once you see a deer somewhere, once you see something somewhere, you, you constantly look for it to see it again. 
Um, I think we've seen twice, maybe three times deer there in the, you know, 50, 60 walks we've taken this, this month alone. And, um, and so we're always, we're always peeking. We're always looking. I, I grab my phone sometimes cause I'm, I'm sure that there's going to be one bedded down there. Well, yesterday we were sitting and had the windows, uh, the shades open in the camper and we saw several fire trucks we're right next to the fire station so this is an uh, unusual thing like it wasn't out of the question that a fire truck would pull out and drive down our road um but it kept going back and forth one and then a little truck um and then the the, the tennessee wildlife forest forestry guy or might have been u.s uh, one of the forestry guys was back and forth with the fire truck I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And um, Corey at one point said, I think I could smell smoke. And I didn't really smell it. I didn't I didn't notice. I was like, oh, it's probably far away if, if it is. Um, and so didn't think much of it. And come afternoon walks, we had some plans in the evening. So Corey doesn't get done until 4.30. I decided, or we decided that I was, I was going to take the dogs on individual walks before um, before she was done so we could just go and go to dinner because we needed to be done by five. So I started taking the dogs for a walk and Walter goes first. Walter never walks far. Um, basically, he walks until he's done and then he'll stand there and look at you or he'll drag, um, drag his feet so slow that you're like, this is ridiculous. And you turn around and you go back. And then he pretty much runs back. So Walter went, he went about half uh, half of what we normally do. Norman's the same way. He goes until he takes a crap and then he wants to come back. Like literally, you know, dog, hunch up, take a crap, stand there. And um, when they're done, they keep walking. Well, Norman will only walk the direction coming back to the camper. So he'll stop. And once he's stopped, he's not going any further. So he comes back. He was about he was about halfway, uh, halfway as much as the normal walk. And this is this is normal for individual walks. Like they they tough it out when it's the three of us or the five of us together. When it's individual, they don't care. They just go as far as they want and then come back. Well, I take Clyde, and Clyde would go forever if you let him. Like he would he would he would keep walking forever. So he goes the full length of the walk. It's about 15 minutes out, 15 minutes back. We get going and we start going down this hill down to the end. And down the hill is where the field is, where the where the bucks were always laying. And I come over the crest of the hill and I look and there's like smoke rolling out of the, the ditch. And I'm like, what the hell is that? I get down there and the whole thing is scorched um the ditch the the trees in the ditch there they the fire department had cut swaths um to stop the brush fire uh in the field like all the underbrush out where the deer were bedded down uh, and then into the trees uh off in the field they were scorched up i'm like hmm whether that was intentional whether that was a cigarette butt out the window i don't know um I've noticed the guy on the other side of the property. Uh, so the people own from road to road. And uh, I noticed the guy parked on the other side for quite a few days in a row hunting. And I uh, got a curious feeling that maybe he was trying to push the deer. He didn't have enough people to drive the deer to him. So he was pushing them one way or another. Not, uh, I don't have any factual evidence for that. But I mean, Looking where the fire probably started, I'm guessing cigarette butt or something out the window into the dry ass ditch that it hasn't rained here in forever. So that was my guess, but I don't think we're going to see many deer bedded down in the the charred remains of the grass. But you never know. You never know. So that was a surprise yesterday, and um, a little close, a little close for uh, for what I like. Uh, if you've been listening for just over or just under a year i would guess would be when we um when we burned our uh, burned a little bit of the campground that we were staying at in texas so i don't know used to it a little bit but uh but that was a surprise when i came over the hill yesterday um getting caught up i'm getting caught up a little bit on stuff yesterday i uh, i've been helping norman and herschel with the roof project 
a um, couple guys I met at SRF and they ended up living real close here. I've been helping them with a roofing project. I've been uh, trying to get over there a couple days a week and help them as much as I can and still keep up. And this week I just realized that I was, I was behind on things. And so I took the week off from helping them and I've been getting caught up. Things have been getting done. I, uh, I talked about earlier in the week that, um, <laughs> I talked earlier in the week about getting the comfrey, uh, the comfrey page up and, uh, new tiered pricing on that. Uh, yesterday I, dug into this shopping on on youtube so i actually have to look on my screen here because i can, can't ever see what the live screen looks like um uh, nope it doesn't show up on the live only on the replay interesting interesting okay um so i connected a shop i had to make a new shop and connected a shop to the to our youtube channel part of the monetization monetization thing that's been available the whole time since we've hit a thousand subscribers and i just never did it uh yesterday i i looked at it and went wow this looks pretty easy so i dove in i got a couple bugs up and uh and listed there there's some other items that i have in mind that i want to put in just the in the it'll be underneath the videos i guess at when they play not live like the replays so Got that done and just a, a bunch of uh, a, a little stuff that I hadn't had the opportunity to keep up with because uh, I was off doing uh, doing some work and, and helping some new friends. Uh, we actually ended up having dinner with them. That was our plan uh, that I had to get the dogs walk before five o'clock because we met um, met those guys for Mexican and margaritas. It was uh, it was good. It was good. It's nice to get out. Uh, we have a fantastic Mexican restaurant here in Saltillo. Who'd have thought it? It's the uh, it's the one place to eat within uh, within man fifty miles. That um, that's really really good, and it happens to be right around the corner. And they have fantastic margaritas. They have fantastic margaritas. Um, the live Chris Dixon says the live comments don't transfer to the replay on youtube i noticed is that by design uh i don't have control over that i don't think i have um i think it takes a while it either takes a while or it's available for a short time <laughs> i'm not sure chris i don't i don't go back and watch uh rewatch the videos on youtube but i know that yesterday when i was testing out one of the older ones i tagged one of the products in it i was just doing some uh some testing it did scroll the live comments um, on desktop. Are you talking on on desktop or on mobile? Uh, and I can, I think I remember seeing something where you could turn them off or turn them back on, like show them or not show them. But this was all on desktop, so I'm not sure about on mobile. But they did populate. I think they take a while. I know when um, I'm done with the live stream, and it's like a couple days where it's it's it can be up a, up to a couple days where it is in processing so it'll show the video but it won't show the live comments and then yeah it, it's weird the analytics on the backside the first the first day or so they're considered live views and then they change into video views once it's all processed and uploaded I, it's it's an odd thing it is a very odd thing for sure and I don't know if that is uh, has something to do with going through StreamYard or it's a YouTube thing regardless if you just uh, stream at YouTube. But <coughs> anyway, I'm, I apologize. I see uh, maybe it was too soon. Yeah, it might have been. might have been too soon for sure. Um, I do see that. Uh, I do see them pop up on older videos. So maybe check back. Check back again. Watch them. Watch them often and watch them a lot. <laughs> Uh, anyway, other than that, I'm going to save this other item for tomorrow's coffee chat. Um, I'll give you a little preview of what, um, what we'll talk about tomorrow morning in the coffee chat. Gotten a discussion and a bunch of people here might be, might be in that discussion, uh, in the SRF telegram group, but somebody was talking about dogs getting into chickens and 
yeah, I have some probably interesting takes on that as far as um, as far as how to handle that and who's to blame and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, I dealt with it on our farm, and I, I think I've changed my opinions since then. Uh, but listening to the people talk, I wanted to say something, but it really was it really wasn't uh, wasn't the appropriate um, appropriate place to uh, display those thoughts that I was having. So I'll do it live on my podcast tomorrow morning in the coffee talk. We'll talk about um, my thoughts on what to do when uh, when your livestock's getting killed by neighbor's dogs. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that. Uh, we're up here uh, way o- way over fifteen minutes today, but let's get on to the topic. Um, today we're talking about the gig economy. Let's take a quick second here to appreciate uh, a service and website that I am affiliated with that is is wholeheartedly in the middle of the gig economy, and that's Fiverr. It's an incredible online marketplace that connects businesses with freelancers offering digital services. Whether you're into graphic design, writing, programming, even digital marketing, Fiverr's got a gig or freelancer for you. So both sides of the coin that we'll be talking about today. You see, Fiverr is all about empowering freelancers like like you, me, anybody looking to get into the gig economy to do what they love, earn from doing it, and live life on your terms. It's quick, secure, and a variety of gigs offered is mind-boggling. So if you haven't already, why not dive in and explore Fiverr? You might just stumble upon the gig that fits you perfectly or find someone to help you out with some of the stuff that you need done. Check out the affiliate link in the show notes. And um, yeah, every click supports the Lots Project, especially when you sign up and start using the service. Let's uh, let's build this thing together. Let me uh, Let me hit this. <laughs> Gingerbread says that he decided any chicken eaten by a dog is natural selection for the dog or for the chicken. Oh, gig economy. Gig economy. Um, what is it? What is it? Uh, I know that it's the term's been around for uh, quite some time now. Quite some time. And I heard it for a, a long time when I first started hearing about it. I heard gig economy, gig economy. And it, it was a term that kind of was in um, was kind of in the online space. It's uh, definitely it's definitely geared towards uh, tech savvy um, at this point. And as I heard gig economy, I kept thinking like gigabyte, gig, gigabyte um, technology computers, things like that. Um, and then at some point I realized and, and made this uh, um, light bulb moment where I was like, gig, oh, weird, like a musician, like an actor, and uh, it all clicked all at once. So let me uh, let me start here by, by um, really defining what the gig economy is. Uh, as I understand it, or as I understand it for this discussion, um, the gig economy be something to the effect of pull this uh, pull this definition off the web. It says a labor market characterized by the prevalence of short term contracts or freelance work as opposed to permanent jobs. So basically, any side hustle I would would say is a gig um, as part of the gig economy. And then as you build that um, into a full-time job or or anything like that, it would be all part of this mass, um, this big mass of, um, of freelancers out there. It's been a shift for a while. Uh, I talked about online focus mainly, but I think it really, really kicked off with the Ubers and the, and the um, food delivery services and um uh why can't i think of um grubhub and and things like that i think that really spurred it off it's always been there i believe it's always been there in the background there's always been people that have have hustled that have not had that nine to five job and made it work or supplemented moonlighting i think would been would have been a lo- uh, a term for doing this a long time ago was like picking picking that little side gig to do after yours for whatever reason 
whether it's to save up extra money for Christmas presents or to um, pay off some debt or pay some bills, pay off the house early, uh, or just just stack some cash for some fun or emergency. That That is kind of where this came out of. And I think the gig economy is getting strong enough and, and propelling its stuff into itself into a major role. And as I, as I was contemplating that I was, I was diving into a little research on the topic and I found a couple of interesting stats that, that really support that, um, that it's estimated in 2023 that 52% of the U S workforce will either be gig workers or have worked independently some point in their career. 52%. So I think that is, um, I think that's a sign that, um, that this is, it's working. It's working for people. Uh, it's something that, um, (laughs) <laughs> it reminds me, Kyle, the backwoods butcher. Thanks for joining in. Uh, he says if he'd figure he'd jump in because this reminds me of his days as a sex worker. Gig work, completely, completely gig work for sure, Kyle. Thanks, uh, thanks for dropping that in and letting us know. But the fact that fifty-two percent are e- are currently or have worked independently on some freelance type things for Uber for. Um, for Grubhub, for DoorDash, uh, for, for anything like that, over half the people in the U.S. economy. I know we got a lot of Canadian folks. I'm thinking it's similar there, but um, man, it's uh, it's popular. It's popular. Um, and then to add on top of that, if we're looking at millennials and younger. Forty-eight percent of them currently use gig platforms, gig job platforms, and I'll talk about some of those in a little bit. But use these platforms to find work or engage with their clients. Forty-eight percent of the younger generation right now is <laughs> is actually using these services or. Um, they're using them to find work or to keep in touch with their clients to manage their workload. So I think it's a trend. It's trending up. Obviously it's, it's uh, you can see how it's developed from the implementation of these first few services of the door dashes of Ubers of all the ride shares Lyft. Um, I think they were kind of the, the lead of understanding that they can do this on their time to make their wage that maybe the wage is, uh, is going to be a little lower than a, uh, than a traditional job, but the time allotment where you can do it on your time, you can work as much or as little as you want, uh, is, is really advantageous. And then if you roll in the, the virtual aspect of it, finding jobs online, finding things you can do digitally and having um, having clearing houses for these job listings. It's just, it's connecting all the dots. Work that needs to get done, people that know how to do it and value for value exchange in the end where they're just getting paid directly for the work they're doing. Um, Kyle says he's not gay. We question that sometimes, but 20 is $20 is $20. Um, Gingerbread Farm says that Kyle's sex, sex worker days were very short jobs in more than one way. Uh, and good morning, Jim. It's okay for being late. <laughs> Kyle, Chris Dixon, Kyle's the master moderator now. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on here on, on the gig economy. That's kind of what it is, and my thoughts and and where it's uh, where it's going, where it's been, and where it's going. Uh, kind of the definition. Uh, one of the, I was kind of touching on some of the pros there, the pros of kind of getting into this this um, this style of work. Now, one of the pros is you can do it. You can do it as a side. Side hustle, extra money. 
Uh, and that's that's a, a, a way that a lot of people get into it. Good morning, K Bonk. How are we doing? Um, that's a way a lot of people get into doing this is for some extra cash. They're they're running tight on bills. They have something they want to save up for. They're trying to get rid of some debt. And they're looking for other ways to to supplement that income, to supplement that nine to five. Well, if you have ever worked two jobs, if you've ever worked two like J-O-B jobs, like job jobs where um, you have set hours and this and that, um, <laughs> when, uh, when you try to schedule those, especially when you have the first job and you're trying to get hired for the second job and they're like, well, these are the work hours. Like, well, I got another job. So can we change that a little bit? Things get a little things get a little sticky. I've, I've uh, experienced that uh, when I was bartending. That was what you did. You worked multiple. Um... <laughs> I, uh, it was um, it was difficult. It was what you did when you bartended. Like you didn't get a, a 40 hour a week bartending job. So you got multiple 10 hour a week bartending jobs at different places is, is, is kind of what my motivation was. My, my intention was a lot of my, my coworkers, that was, um, that was what we, uh, was our, our, our goal. I mean, you, all the bars that we were working at, that's kind of their goal too. They didn't, they didn't want 40 hour a week employees. They wanted somebody that's going to be there for 10 for a couple shifts a week. And so putting those puzzles together and um, figuring out from multiple employers got to be a, a pain in the ass. Once you kind of really dialed it in and you had like set schedules at different places, then you were set. But as the new guy, you just get filled in where you get filled in when the schedule's made. Usually they're making them a week at a time, two weeks at a time, and you're running around each job looking, going, oh my God, I'm uh, I'm double booked on this day. I got to get somebody to cover for me on that day. I got to call in sick here. And it, it really didn't, it didn't work very well. So that was, that was the old style of, uh, of multiple jobs. And then add on top of that, if you got your 40 hour a week job, and then you are required to now go to that second job because it's got a set schedule. You don't feel like it tonight. Too bad. You got to go. Otherwise, you got to go through the process again of, of finding that new job. So um, it um, it got daunting. It got to where it got to where you know I want to make a little extra money, but is the juice worth the squeeze with all the headaches that come with it? James Gingerbread Farm says Walmart delivery paid well with the electric cars and the solar. Yeah, yeah, that that's one of the one of the cons, and I guess one of the pros and one of the cons. Um, so, what the gig economy did when it rolled out, and as it's it's gotten stronger, was it took away that that need to find that second job, that full full on. HR hired set schedule um, show up or you get um, you get you get fired you get reprimanded you um, you have to show up when they want you to show up gig work kind of flipped that on its head and you show up when you want to show up you show up and work when when it's it feels appropriate to you. And depending on your motivation and your your work ethic, that might be all the time, or it might be on a weekend because you want to go out drinking with your buddies and you needed an extra hundred bucks. So you put in a few hours, you log a few hours. Um, this changed people into independent contractors. It's what it did. It's on you. It's on you. Um, it can be great. It can be great. It can be flexible. It can be um, very rewarding uh, to see to see people using their brain to figure out how to use the system to the most advantage. If that makes sense, like um, <laughs> um, so 
let's uh let's <laughs> sorry guys sorry um so that's how i, I it kind of started out i think it grew in strength it started out as that second job as that um as that extra income i think as people realize that i can work as hard as i want i can work as much as i want or as little as i want that they realize that this can actually this can actually work for full time work. This can act as a, a stepping stone to a full solid job. Um, so, what um, what I mean by that is people started realizing that my nine to five that I had to be there nine to five, they would much rather work like four in the morning till two in the afternoon. Or they would much rather work noon till 10 at night. But in their in their industry, in their specialty, in whatever they were doing, that job, that that um, that normal job isn't available with those parameters. <clears throat> so maybe they look and say, well, I can make X amount of dollars per hour, um, usually per job. I can make that and schedule it around my life. And the more they did it, the more they realized that maybe the cost and the benefits of going the other way was was more in line with their lifestyle. 48% of millennials. Millennials have kind of grew grew up into this, grew up into um in with this around. Uh, I don't know how long Uber Eats or DoorDash or all of those have been around where where this has really kind of kicked off. But they've they've been immersed in it for their whole life. They've seen the options, and it doesn't surprise me that um, that half that half of them have are currently using that was they were currently using this to find work. <laughs> Kyle says he heard you clear your throat, and would you mind keeping it down because it's a professional broadcast? <laughs> oh yeah. No, I mean, you can call her and talk to her about it if you'd like, Cal. Um, I'll leave that up to you. So I, I see I see the draw to it. I see I see the avenues to making this a full um, full full time job. It's a very easy avenue to to enter as a as a part time thing. I think it's a very valuable resource for for people looking to expand. Uh, to make more money right now, uh, e inflation, uh, budgets are going up, things like that. And to make ends meet, how hard is it to pop open your DoorDash app if you have a fuel efficient car and go to an area that has um, that has a lot of restaurants, has a lot of restaurant traffic and deliver some food for a little while and pick up some extra money? Um so the pros, let's get to some of the pros of, of going this way, of utilizing this gig economy. Um, flexibility. I think flexibility is probably the biggest, the biggest, um, the biggest benefit. It's there when you want it to be there, especially if you set it up right. We're talking about more of these physical, physical roles like delivering groceries, delivering uh, fast food or ride share, things like that. But right now it's a, it's an ever expanding um, online marketplace with, um, with remote work, with, with people understanding computers, um, computers uh, doing stuff digitally, care, taking care of things remotely. Uh, a lot of things, anything from graphic design to accounting to um, SEO, web promotion, these things you can teach yourself or go take classes on. There's people that need it done. They don't need it done. They don't need you to come to their office and sit down and do it. They need to to hire you. You do it, deliver the product digitally, and you're done. Uh, if you set up your stuff right, if you set up your parameters and your boundaries, right? We've talked about boundaries before on side hustle shows, uh, setting those boundaries to where um, 
setting the boundaries to where you don't burn yourself out or maybe you want to, I don't know. Maybe you want to work until you drop and then, and then stop. I don't know. But setting those boundaries at, and working within them, the flexibility of, of taking those jobs when you want. You want to take a week, week off to go, I don't know, skydiving in, in California. You don't have to worry about how much PTO you have. You just have to worry about that you've made enough money. You have to worry about that you don't have any jobs booked or you can pause them or you can move them off to the next uh, the next week when you want to get back. Uh, Pip says he's been curious about dr dr doing Uber Eats in the afternoon. I'm usually home by 2 p.m. Uh, Jim says, I did Uber for a minute here in Lakeland. Wasn't worth it. Too much idle time. Now I just do airport runs. Now, um, so Jim brings up an interesting point. Now I know someone that uses this 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 kind of work style um, because he's self employed, because he's available to come and go as he pleases. Um, he's been able to supplement on with uh, with the gig economy by using things like Uber or DoorDash. Uh, he has the app open on his phone. He is he is working on whatever he's working on for himself for his own business, <laughs> and he just keeps an eye on the phone when something pops up that makes sense, that brings more value to him than staying and doing what he was currently doing. He stops what he's doing. He goes, does the food run, comes back and continues uh, working on what he's doing. Backwards Butcher says he moonlights as a vet when people don't want to pay the crazy price to put their livestock down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, that's a nice side gig. That's a nice side gig. Good morning, Corey. Uh, there's multiple people here uh, interested in saying good morning to you. Uh, yeah, so the flexibility, the flexibility is the big pro, uh, the big pro to uh, to the gig economy. Second is a work-life balance. Uh, you can really, and that just goes hand in hand with flexibility. You can do it when you want. You can be, you can be present for, um, for, for your, your life, your personal life can really be built um, and then build your, build your uh, work life into it instead of the other way around where you are are set in stone on your schedule and having to work around that and everything in your everything in your um in your personal life so it's really easy to make it to your kids softball game when you can work before and after instead of having to work until it's halfway over and then try to make it uh, because you get off of work late. You don't have to beg your boss to get out early. You don't have to go in early, get out early. Uh, you can do jobs up until the time you need to be done. And then you just don't do any more work until it's it's on your schedule. Uh, so that's another another benefit is that work life, uh, work life balance. Potential for increased income. And that's that's kind of a um that's kind of a double-edged sword. You can make money. You can make plenty of money. If you're doing the right thing, you market it effectively. Uh, like James said, the, the Walmart, the key to the Walmart delivery for the money being worth it for his ex-wife was the, the electric car and the solar power to charge it. MSU Rifle says flexibility is a big benefit with OnlyFans. Yes, it can definitely make you more money and raise your income. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> when you have a job, when you have a job, when you have your nine to five, you have your, your wage, your hourly or your salary. Uh, you have to go in every six months and get your review. Hopefully you get your, your 2% raise or your 1% raise. Maybe it's once a year or you gotta, you gotta suck it up and you go into your boss and you say, yeah, I've been doing, doing a really, really, really good job. 
been doing a really good job. I've, I've been, uh, I've been making the company money. Uh, I, I think I deserve a raise. And he looks at, it and he says, well, there's no money in the budget for raises. Um, uh, we haven't made enough money or whatever. You'll get your raise at, at your review. Uh, there, there is, there's very few jobs where the value for value happens. Um, you come and do your work and, and I'm not saying that you didn't, you didn't agree to work for that wage. That's, that's kind of the whole employment thing is you signed up to do it for X amount of dollars and you do your job and they pay you. Um, the vehicle for making more is, is really difficult though. It's really difficult when you're when you're in that job, especially with the majority of employers. I'm not saying that there aren't great employers out there that you can be like, hey, um, I think I, I think I need a little a, a little raise. And they, they actually do it uh, when it comes to the gig economy. Man, a lot of times you set your own price um, in a lot of services. Uh, I'm going to talk about some websites where you can find work and where people list work for that are is available here in a bit. Uh, depending on the site, the 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 per the contractor or the contractee are going to set the wage, set the the rate. Um, a lot of the things like the the food delivery or the ride share that's all calculated for you, and it's up to you to decide if that's worth your time. Is that worth it? Um, you don't get to go in on a on a Friday morning at work and and uh, two guys called in sick and your boss goes, well, fuck you. Uh, you have to do three jobs today and I need them all done before you go home from the week weekend. And I need you to stay until it's all done. And you go, well, do I get three times the wage? And they look at you like you have three heads. Well, in a gig economy setup, if you're able to multitask and do three jobs at once, all three of those jobs are paying you. Do I think that's possible? I don't know. I don't know. I've seen some pretty pretty crazy setups when I've been looking into uh, looking into some of this, where people have six or seven different jobs they're doing at one time. They have several several income sources coming in at the same time because they could work and complete jobs simultaneously. They set themselves up for different gigs using different skills or resources at the same time. And they're just multiplying their income. They're getting paid three X for their hour. So are there places, are there places, gingerbread farms says be someone they can't replace. Why? So they can ride you harder. Or you can say no, and then the work doesn't get done. The people that can't be replaced are the people that know how to do everything that they lean on to do everything. Be someone they can't replace. That's job security, but it also comes with a lot. Um, that's that that comes with a lot of um, a lot of responsibility and a lot of uh, a lot of. <laughs> man there's power plays and anybody that doesn't think they're replaceable mm, you are you can find out real quick that that is a different uh that the the answer to that is is wholly different than what you think <laughs> you learn how to do it they can teach someone else how to do it it's just a matter it's going to be another value for value equation this time on the employer side how much is it going to cost me to replace this asshole and how much of a pain in the ass is he because he thinks he's he's unre he's not replaceable pip says yeah every single person can be replaced the caliber and quality of the worker would probably suffer yeah 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 so never never think you're not replaceable everybody's replaceable <laughs> So there's a potential for more income. Uh, there's also a potential that there isn't a lot of income. Uh, like like Jim found out in Lakeland, it just wasn't worth the the Uber stuff. It just wasn't busy enough. Too much idle time. Um, Brian was able to figure out how to do it intermittent with what he was already working on. So he was achieving something and then taking breaks to earn money. Um, picking up picking up side gigs. Uh, I, delivery stuff. 
uh, assembly things. I know that when I was leaving Minnesota, there was um, a site I was looking into. It came through Angie's list. Um, handyman, um, handiwork. I don't remember what the name of the actual app was. It was an offshoot of Angie's list. But basically, it was um, it was the jobs that were out for hire for um, individuals, but also companies. So when you would, when you would, um, when you call Walmart or you order something from Walmart and it's delivered and installed, you could use the upgraded install package or assembly, uh, on-site assembly for furniture, things like that, hanging a TV on the wall. That was all subcontracted out through this app. And basically you opened up the app and you put in your zip code and it, it populated a list and you could search it by price. You could search it by distance from your zip code. Um, and it just told you little odd jobs that were available to do. You clicked on it, you uh, submitted, you got accepted, you went and did it and they paid you. It's, um, it's, it, it was, it was what it was. It wasn't right for me because the nearest job that paid anything decent to cover my gas, because I drove a, a bigger vehicle, <laughs> they were an hour away. So I was eating into what I was going to make by having to drive there. Now, I did get into the mode and I was still working full time. So this really wouldn't have worked. It wasn't right for the one off models. Once I had all day to do it, you could look at it and see the, the potential in having three or four jobs lined up in the more densely populated areas, go there, drive there once, do a bunch of jobs and come home. That made sense. The money made it, made it worth it at that point. So there is definitely that double-edged sword of increased income or, um, yeah, it's not guaranteed. Um, those are a couple of advantages, a couple of the disadvantages of going this route. Um, finding, finding what you can do, really finding what you can do, being able to evaluate your skills, find out what, um, find out what you're good at, what you enjoy doing that you're good at and who's hiring and how much they're paying for it. Do going through that whole evaluation process can be very daunting. And if you make a couple of mistakes, you can end up being just, um, not happy with your decision. Um, and the other side of that income sword, it's not guaranteed. There's no, if you just show up and you do the minimum effort, you get your paycheck at the end of the day. That's not how it works. You want to make more money. You have to either figure out a way to work more hours, or you have to figure out a way to earn more per hour. Uh, it's on you. It's on you. It's not there. Um, you're an independent contractor, you're figuring out all the backside, all the stuff that your employer's paying for, uh, the insurance, the taxes, all of that. Uh, a lot of these sites will manage that for you, uh, and some won't. If you don't go through the sites and you go to do this on your own, as in many people in this audience or our community have, uh, have built handyman businesses, have built other things on, on the same prefaces of of gig work of doing doing jobs not the same job all the time moving through jobs and getting paid individually for them um it's um it's it's definitely a uh it it can it can be a draw it can be it can be a disadvantage to go this way it's all what you want and i think a lot of people have talked about this uh doing the side hustle being an entrepreneur being your own boss uh it's not right for everyone it's not right for everyone maybe you just want to go put your head down and do what you're told and get your paycheck and that's perfectly perfectly fine and it works it's how it's how our whole economy was built I think that there's just a new direction that uh, that people are going, where they're seeing the the um, advantages of of taking this online route or just in person gig route. 
And I don't think that um, that the powers to be are that excited about it because they seem to try to be restricting it as we go. As we go, there's more and more restrictions. They're seeing the freedom, the flexibility, and the power that it gives the employees. And that's not what they want. They want a bunch of worker bees. So let me hit some of the, the places where you can find uh, find this gig work. Some of the, the sites you can bounce to and check out what um, check out what is going on. Um, let me see here. I have a list. I'm going to bring it up here. Yeah, just not cooperating, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, it shrink. It shrunk to uh, beyond readable. <laughs> okay, I'm going to hit some of these uh, gig sites for online work. I've mentioned a bunch of times, like the Ubers, the, the DoorDash, those in-person apps where you're just going to find it. You're going to download the app, sign up, and uh, and they're pretty self-explanatory. Some of the other websites for for online gig work um, would be this site ranked them. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna just use this site that had this 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 list for the best sites, and they had them kind of categorized. Their best overall one was Upwork. Upwork is a um, it's a freelancer marketplace. It's very similar to Fiverr, like I uh, I mentioned before. Uh, as a freelancer, as the person looking for the gig work, it's it's got a huge um, it's got a huge database and uh, great search functions. Now, one con to this, I believe, um, I believe Upwork had a registration fee. Maybe not. Maybe not Upwork. Um, it's free. Excuse me. It's free to free to create the, the freelancer account on Upwork. Uh, but it is. It's very expensive at the beginning. They don't want people coming in, using it, hit it, quit it, go. Um, they want long term, um, long term and higher contract work. Twenty uh, percent they take. Uh, for the first $500 build across all contacts with them. So you sign up the first $500 worth of jobs you book, they take 20%. Um, between $500 and $10,000 worth of work through them, they're going to take 10% cut uh, for being that uh, for being that, that database, that clearinghouse for these jobs. And then uh, 5% after you hit 10 grand. Uh, the way that this is really, really helping people is they're landing that first job with a client. They're doing the great job of um, they're they're doing a great job uh, on that first job with a client. Then they're they're creating that personal relationship with them and taking it off the site, becoming a one on one freelancer. This is just more of a this is more of a introduction. Um, you can continue to just work through them and, and pick off jobs here and there. People hire you. Uh, I would if you go this route, I would always suggest trying to get in that personal one on one relationship with them. Uh, another site you can pick from. They chose it as the, the best runner up for this. This whole um, online world is called Freelancer.com. Um, Freelancer is um, they they take a little less fees. They have a little less um, robust selection uh, database of jobs of people looking for jobs, uh, and they have different different uh, fees that they take. Fixed price projects they're going to take three uh, percent fee or three dollars, which is ever is greater. So you're looking right there by by a minimum of three dollars that these are going to be smaller jobs. They're going to be smaller tasks, maybe making a logo for 50 bucks or things like that. Uh, hourly projects, the, they'll do an hourly rate through this site. Uh, they take 3% off of that. Services where you're doing something and offering a flat rate as a service, 20%. Um, and then um, if you refer, uh, if you refer a client to them, so if you get a client to sign up and use their service, their booking service, maybe for you, 
uh, and other people, if they're looking for other services, uh, there will be no future fees with them. So that's a, a little perk to uh, to get in and bring your uh, bring your business to 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 freelance to to freelancer.com uh, to get the people that you're using, and then you get to use that site without taking any fees. Ah, good good um, good morning, Polar Nights. Hopefully everything's going well over there on Twitch. Hunter, you got a buddy over on Twitch now. The two of you. Uh, another site to check out guru. I'm going to pop through these real quick. We're running up on an hour. Uh, guru is, uh, a, another online source. It's a membership, uh, a membership style, uh, a membership style, um, site that, uh, that, that is a clearing house task rabbit was one that I looked into again in Minnesota, but because we were so rural, it um it didn't really work for me, but Task Rabbit basically um, Task Rabbit basically you sign up for a certain area, uh, say what specific jobs you're looking for, and they populate on your on your phone app, and they're small jobs, they're uh, online jobs, they're running to the store, they're uh, they're little odds and ends jobs. Task Rabbit, think about running around like a rabbit. Um, Things like that. <laughs> Polar Knight says, this has been a good day. I made a liberal into a conservative and I made my son move out of the basement and get a job. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, I did have a handy work account there, Kyle. Uh, Toptal is another website that you can use and Flex Jobs. I'm going to have these in the in the video notes. I'll go back and I will uh, I will get those in the video notes. I I just don't have time to run through all of them. It ran long on the other stuff on this list. I apologize. Uh, and then Fiverr is also on this list. Fiverr is the the one that I'm affiliated with that I talked about earlier. That um, is a lot of digital work. It's uh, it's everything done online, and uh, it's a it's a really interesting site. And if you're looking to get in to doing gig work if you like video editing <clears throat> kyle uh things like that if you do bookkeeping if you do digital design website design oh man there's a you can go and look at all the categories offered over there and uh and see the variety and um and see for yourself if you do that please hit that link in the video uh description for my affiliate fiverr is really the only only affiliated affiliated company that on this list that uh that i go through uh hunter said which one is grunt work again um i would say task rabbit i probably find in task rabbit i am i am exploring currently getting set up doing handyman work around here um and i think i'll probably have another episode as i dive into breaking into finding jobs in a new area to you someplace where you're not super established uh and finding out where people look for those jobs i have a few lists i have a few ideas i've been uh, networking with my guys that have started up handyman businesses and figuring it all out i'll probably have to save that for another episode though as we are up here on an hour i appreciate you guys listening i hope that uh i hope that if you've never heard of the gig economy this is something that it, that opened your eyes. If you have and you've been considering jumping in, I hope it helped uh, help solidify that. And uh, man, if you are happy with what you're doing and you don't need anything else, I'm glad you listened and I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, tomorrow we're talking Bitcoin. Today's Thursday. Yeah, tomorrow we're talking Bitcoin. Bitcoin versus traditional currency. We're going to give away 50,000 Satoshis if we can get uh, 20 20 live entrances, live entrance to the drawing between 6 and 7 a.m. Central. So be sure to, to join us on YouTube, Face, Twitch, or Twitter. Um, and like I say every day, if you'd like to participate in live comments, you can always join the live recording Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Central, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, or Twitter. If you enjoyed the show, please consider sharing it with others. You can find all my social media links, services I offer, recommended products and companies I'm affiliated with at thelotsproject.com. Be sure to listen on one of your favorite podcasts, 2.0 Value for Value podcast player like Podverse or Fountain.fm. Make it a great day, guys. 
and we will catch up with you on 50k friday